was uh, middle of January and it was um, eight o'clock at night and I was just walking out the door to go to um, a meeting with my younger, my 12 year old son. And he had said, I really need to talk to you. And I, I said, all right, well, what is it? For pretty much that whole week, I was trying to build, build up the, uh, I guess the strength uh, to be able to talk to her about it. Cause it's a very, it's a very weird subject to be able to talk to your mom about that body part specifically. It was 15 minutes, but it seemed like it was the longest period of time ever. It was so long. Uh, a few minutes went by because I was, I was very nervous. The whole time he was not talking, I was filling in the blanks. Is he suicidal? Is he on drugs? But I bit my tongue and I said, I am going to listen and be patient. And so that's when he said, I have a pain. Okay. He said, I have a pain in my groin. Okay. I said, because instantly right then I thought, okay, he's got strangulated testicle or hernia. I never thought it was a big deal. So I got in the car, brought him down, took 10 minutes to get there, and they took us right in. He said, your son has testicular cancer. And I said, I'm okay. It was like me verbally checking. I like assessed myself. I'm okay. The truth is it was so surreal. I couldn't even understand that I could put the word my son and cancer in the same sentence. I talked to the doctor and the doctor said, Tim's is really bad. He said, we're, we're hoping that we can help him. There's no guarantees because it's it spread pretty far. How could this have happened and we not know about it? Um, it came as such a shock. So at first I really didn't know how to respond. It was kind of numbing. Well, shock is the first word that comes to my mind because when we first heard that he was having problems, we thought that it would be some minor issue that would quickly be resolved. My thoughts were just so jumbled thinking about the impact that this was gonna have on his, his sisters that love him and his little brother that was never gonna be the same again after this. And, and of course, feeling for, for Tracy and I can't imagine being a parent myself, how I would feel if it were my son that were going through this. Oh, to find out that he's, you know, he's in that pain and he's been going through it for so long and then to find out that it's actual cancer it was just, just kind of devastating. It's like, you know, uh, you just feel so bad for them and, and for, you know, for Tracy that, you know, what they're gonna have to go through. I had never, ever, ever heard about self-exams for guys. I heard about girls checking their, their breasts. My teenage girls know to check their breasts. My mother gave me the testicular cancer shower card, which taught me how to check myself. The longer you wait, the worse it's going to get. The longer it has to spread, and the more treatment you're going to have to go through, and the, just the worse you're going to feel afterward. Since Tim's had cancer, we talk very differently and very openly. So much to the point where he's so open with me, I. I just, I act really like, oh yeah, that's all cool, you can tell me that. And in my mind I'm going, I don't want to know this, oh my goodness. But, because it's really embarrassing and very personal, but it's like, okay, I can do this. It's healthy, it's what you're supposed to do because you are given the gift of a healthy body. And what you do with a gift that's precious to you is you protect it. And you protect it with some knowledge and taking a little time. My husband had left me two, two weeks before. So if someone had said, in two weeks, your husband's gonna leave you and he's diagnosed with cancer. You can have that or you can have normal life. Which one do you want? I know I would have said, I want normal life. I don't want cancer. I don't want cancer touching my family. But knowing what I know now wouldn't change one single thing.